as we hold this light, let us imagine it is the divine torchlight that you and I have been invited to bring, to bring the love of the cosmic Christ, the love of our God to the world. And we can do that by simply being still, by making time each day to sit in the presence of God and say nothing. And in the nothingness, in the silence, the Spirit will come upon us and the Divine will speak to us. So let us now offer these 30 minutes in thanksgiving to a loving Father Mother God Supreme who creates all life in the name of the risen cosmic Christ who loves life, in the name of the Spirit who is the fire of life and in the name of Gaia, our beloved Earth Mother, who nurtures the divine in all life. And in the name of all faith traditions, they too are the sons and daughters of the one true loving God. They are our brothers and sisters. And as a Catholic Christian, Franciscan monk who embraces all faiths. They are part of the mystical body of Christ on earth. Welcome, be still, and allow your heart reclaim your peace. And as we relax, I want to share with you two amazing quotes from a great spiritual man of God who wasn't a Christian but who loved Christ and his name is Gandhi and I have a great love for him. I see him very much on a par with Jesus and Francis of Assisi. But this is what Gandhi says, to find yourself, you first must lose yourself in the service of others. What is that saying? It's not saying we stay at home all day and wallow in our victimhood. And it certainly does not imply that those who've surrendered their heart to God do not, in, do not wallow in victimhood. They go out of their way to find the Christ in the marginalized, in the poor, the needy and the downtrodden. But he also says, in a gentle way, you can shape the world. And what you and I are doing now, as tedious and mundane and humdrum as it may be or become, it is an act of blessing where you and I cross time zones to come and share one gift that we are a beloved of God, that you and I were called by name. You may not be called to be a monk or a nun like me and some of our community, but you are still a child of God and you've been called by name to honor who you are, to honor the divine within you. So let us listen to the heart. Let us honor the mind and bless it. 
but we have to be discerning as to what the mind feeds us. For the mind is like an orchestra without a conductor. And if we are not living and leading a disciplined life, I don't mean an unhappy life where we're miserable and full of religious guilt, no. Religious guilt is not It's not to be tolerated because we've been set free of guilt. It is more about spirituality. It's about embracing your true self-worth as a child of God. Is that where you are now? I want you to ask yourself a simple question. Who am I? Remember God is present. God is in your midst. You may not see God, but God sees you. Who am I? And I want you to answer that in truth. Are you a child of God or are you one who has chosen your own path, a path of destruction and selfishness, a path where you abuse the gifts of God, where you give lip service, but your heart is closed like a frozen piece of meat in the freezer, or like an ice cube, nothing can get to it. You've got to get a chisel and break it and that's what God does to us. If he truly loves us and has a job for us, he will use that sledgehammer and he will chip away at us until we are broken in our selfishness, in our ego, and he will touch us. Yes, he will. Stay with that. Stay with that thought. I can't believe How selfish I've been Looking for something for me In all that I've seen Now I'm so sorry for The life that I led before But that life is gone and the new man walks on You've opened my eyes, Lord You've opened my heart, Lord You've helped me to see It's not about me And the things that I do It's about loving you for so many years I lived like a ghost Thinking that happiness lay With those who have most Pulling on empty strings Putting my trust in things that can't satisfy They just wither and die You've opened my eyes, Lord You've opened my heart, Lord You've helped me to see It's not about me And the things that I do it's about loving 
never happy with me. In fact, if you want me to be truthful, and I will, I despised me, because that was the culture I grew up in, in beautiful Catholic Ireland. I was a God-forsaken sinner, and in the eyes of my church, I guess I had to go on a marathon and by every indulgence that was going in order to win God's love. And now I realize that is pure hypocrisy. God doesn't want you to climb Mount Everest. He wants you to be still and receive the gift of love. He wants you to look in the mirror and instead of looking at it through the mind and thinking, oh, the eye bags are hanging and I could do with the chin tuck and I could do with the ears smalling and reducing, I could do with a hair transplant, that's vanity. And the world you and I live in is more focused on what is the mind telling you? What is your heart telling? When you look in a mirror, try and see what God sees. He doesn't see someone like me, 65 years old, toothless, hairless, and everything's going south. I hope he sees a beautiful child of God who falls down every day. I fall down so many times but he lifts me up again. And that's what he asks of you, to trust him, to trust in love. There's a beautiful book out by Tich Nahan, The Art of Communicating. And it's a book that my heart is guided to buy. Many of us suffer because of difficult communication. We feel misunderstood, especially by those we love. In a relationship, we are nourishment for each other. So we have to select the kind of food we offer to the other person. Nothing can survive without food. 
everything we consume acts to heal us or to poison us. When we say something that nourishes us and uplifts the people around us, we are feeding love and compassion. But when we speak and act in a way that causes tension or anger, we are nourishing violence and suffering. And that's what's happening in Egypt, in Syria, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Nearly every country of this beautiful world, there is pockets of violence. Mankind has become so violent towards itself. Why? Because many are involved in lip service to God and their hearts are closed. You and I are living in exciting times, but I would add dangerous times, because Old Testament prophecies are being fulfilled as you and I sit here watching this. And God is a loving but jealous God. He does not want to share our love with another that destroys his love in us. He wants us to be free in order to use our choice. He's not saying that we should all be celibate. He's inviting us to honor the heart and to surround ourselves with like-minded soulmates who will respect us, not devour us, not have us for a starter, main course and sweet. When you buy a bottle of good wine and you've saved really hard to buy, say, a good bottle of Chardonnay, I don't drink alcohol and haven't done for 16 years. Shame, because I miss it. But if you invest in a good quality, brand of wine. You don't just gulp it down like a glass of water. You sip it, you savour it, you allow your taste buds embrace its flavour. The spiritual life is just like that. God cannot give us too much too soon, for we would evaporate with exasperation. He gives us a little nugget each day, but he gives us trials and tribulations, not that we go under, but that we rise above them. Yes, my mental illness, depression, severe depression, though it does get me down, it's a prayer. It's my gift to God from me. And through that, my God is able to speak to my heart. So rather than me become focused on poor me, I'm depressed. It's why not me? Why shouldn't I share in the sufferings of my beloved? Let us move away from what this mind thinks to more about what is your heart telling you to do? Let's reflect now. Let us come to our heart. Let us come to our heart. Let us be still in our heart. You know and I know that we are called by God to live a fun-filled life. Well, let us live it and let's stop wasting each precious moment by feeling sorry for ourselves or allowing others take away our peace. Let us listen to the heart of God within us 
and let us ascend. Let us ascend to our rightful place in the presence of God. God is not a mean God. Many people say, I pray, I pray, and nothing happens because they don't pray. If you are in need of something from God, name it, bless it, release it with love, and then wait and say, thank you, God, for providing for my need in your time when you know I'm ready to receive it. You do not give a young child of three or four an open barrel shotgun. You give it love. You do not give someone who's hungry a poison chalice. And if you feed your mind self-pity and sadness, gloom and doom and poor me, and that's the life you will live, the victim, not the liberated one. Let us hold hands together. Let us cross nations and time zones. Let us hold each other's hand and let us allow the cosmic cries touch us. Feel his love. I want you to feel his love. Feel it, embrace it. Be vulnerable in the arms of God. And in your vulnerability, offer your disability as your availability to serve God. The Christ is standing before you and me. Can you see him? His arms are outstretched like the shepherd and he's saying, come to me. Come, do not be afraid. I am with you. I have never left you, but you have left me. You have left me when it suits you and you call on me when it suits you. Are you my friend? If you say you are, then go and do the things I ask of you. Surrender your heart to love, to peace. Live your life and stop living everybody else's. Reclaim your self-worth as a child of the Beloved. As a child of Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, God, Father, Creator Supreme. And the Christ is here, and He's touching you. He's touching you with so much love. He's inviting you to dance with Him. The sacred dance the canticle of the creatures to Brother Sun and Sister Moon is inviting you to surrender your heart to love and cease manipulating God to suit your own selfish ways. Your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. I have never left you. And he's now going to pose a question to each one of us. Do you love me? These are the words of the cosmic Christ to your heart. Do you really love me? But if you say you do, then take up your bag of tricks your cross, your sufferings, your ailments, aches and pains, and come, follow me, and I 
I will make you great men and women, ambassadors of peace, and my light will shine through you. Be still now. 